Vicky, Vicky, that, are we all, anyone, anyone else in here a commuter? Any other commuters in yeah. here? Yeah! yeah. Uh, I, I started commuting uh, about, about for, for what? I don't, know, I, I don't know I've got no posh, I do that in front of humans. Um, I started commuting about five weeks or so ago for my first job, and it's, it's terribly exciting because I, I was unaware that there's a, I, I, I know that you know, like British people avoid other, other humans at all costs, that's just a basic instinct. Uh, but, um, but, but silence on the tube, come on people! Some of us are, sat there, some of us are trying to play Pokemon on our 3DSs still and bring joy to commuting while listening to Andrew Marr history books! But, um, I mean, I, I didn't do it very well at first, I'll be honest, because I, I, in my first few weeks, um, I was, you know when you're being trampled on the main, you're shoved around in the tube, the, you know, and that, you're trying to get on? Someone was pushing me on, and I trod on this lady's foot, and I was listening to Andrew Marr very loudly on my Bluetooth headphones to prove that I'm a dick, and I was, um, and, 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 and really, I mean, let's face it, this is the face and voice that I've been given post-puberty, and it's not working, I don't look like a 20, a 22 year old, I still need ID and bars, and I, I'm not 15, I promise, I promise I'm 22, um, I've got my national insurance card with me, um, and, uh, um, which initially you actually only when you're 16, um, anyway, that's not the point, and then this woman pushed me, and there's a lot of pressure, and I stood on this woman's foot, and she was like, oh, bloody, Get away, you lout, she said, which is, you know, everyone's alarmed. Someone had spoken out loud. <laughs> and I, and I, the guy had pushed me, and I just said back, well, I know this guy's a dick. Now the tube was alarmed. <laughs> He's admitted someone's a dick, what do we do? Just, just, just act like it's not happening. And then I, because the game of Tetris, I got shoved, and I got, and ended up looking at the man um, for the next three or four stops. Yeah. And it was wonderful because he just sort of went, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so, um, I just thought I'd very quick, any, any fans of poetry in? Yeah. yeah! About three of you, guess what, the rest of you can be fans of poetry after this, because I'm going to some poetry after this. Um, I'm a particularly big fan of war poetry. Uh, any, fa any, any favourite war poets? Wolfram. Wolfram, classic. Wolfram, Sigmund Freud, all the classics. Uh, I pretend you shout them all of them. Um, I, I have a particular favourite because he was on BBC Two in the, in, in the late 90s. Uh, he was a man of great inspiration to me. I'll, I'll reiterate one of his classics for you now. Um, so, probably my favourite war poet ever, ever, quite frankly. Here's one, of his, here's one of his classics. The world is governed by rules and laws, but that's what you get on Robot Wars. Goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> I am, of course, referring to the well-known Craig Charles from The Robot Wars, a, uh, a large, a, a somewhat unknown civil dispute in Nottingham area, uh, for, um, broadcast live on BBC Two and Channel Five for about seven years. Um, an extreme based spin-offs, just in case you can get enough coverage of the war zone. Here's another one of his. Another one of his. Here's another one of his. For international relations, this fight ensures that all is fair on Robot Wars. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't know why he's doing that. Um, but he does that. Um, of course, what Craig is doing there is he uses international relations theory to satirise the occasion upon which the judges decide that the German and British teams should have a draw. Clever old Craig, you're thinking. I know, but what about an alternate universe where Craig Charles had been in maybe other wars? I'm not saying the wrong wars weren't real. But what if you've been in like the mainstream wars, like the First World War, um, and instead of saying to his adverts before, we'd be watching Craig Charles in the old footage, and he'd be stood there wisely saying something like, the general, the generals ignore us dying. That's what we get. No, no, that's not at all. I'll start again. Start again. I need to have a book, so I'm out of ideas. Um, <laughs> men dying in the trenches that the generals ignore. That's what we got in the First World War. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of the trenches going, what the hell is he doing? What the, what the, what, who, who is he looking? Why is he looking over at the German guns like that? He's going to die. But he survives, Craig Charles. He survives the First World War. And he becomes maybe a well-known poetry figure by the time of the Second World War. And by the time of the Second World War, there he is on, on the platform with Churchill. Churchill's doing the, you know, the classic, that, and then Craig Charles joins him there and goes, oh my god, it's, I got this, I got this. <laughs> the Nuremberg trials will make Germany very sore. But drunk old Churchy, gone and won the Second World War. Goodbye. <laughs> and the day so different. And then think, probably 70 years later, when Craig Charles is like 90 or 100, and like, you know, it's, it's, it's time. He's the poet laureate at last. There he is, 100,000 people protesting against Blair's war in Iraq. And we all look at him for the wisdom at this time. Craig Charles goes, <laughs> Tony Blair's trying to just get some big old oil scores. Hence the chill hot inquiry into the Iraq war. Goodbye. <laughs> His last words. <laughs> I kind of thought it. Um, I actually had the pleasure of seeing Craig Charles do a DJ set at Latitude Festival last year. It was glorious. He was so drunk. This was like pre I'm a celebrity. 
He was really drunk. He was falling over. People helping him stand up. He couldn't hold hands in the big shapes. Drunk into the forest. Big sort of hippie festival. Craig Charles. Um, he was. The, this is my favourite thing I've ever seen in my life because Craig Charles was so drunk that he said, "If you like that one," referring to a song. If you like that one, you'll love this one. And he played the same song again. <laughs> 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 <laughs>